Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, my fellow Kenyans, today I want to be the first person to call for the impeachment of President William Samoy Ruto of Kenya. And here are my reasons. Reason number one is the law of natural justice. The law of natural justice dictates that you are obligated to do good. If you see something wrong, you've got to say something. You've got to do something. You cannot stay idle. Let me give you an example. One of the laws of natural justice is the Good Samaritan law. If you see somebody suffering, someone has had an accident, and you are able to do something, you are obligated to do it. If you see a robbery being conducted, or a murder, or a crime, you are obligated to report it. It's not your choice. You are obligated. And if you do not, then you too can be charged for either abetting or neglecting or just not being human. Having said that, let's go back to Kenya. Kenya is a democracy. The president is elected by the people and there is a constitution. The constitution states that there are three arms of government, the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive. The constitution also states that the power belong to the people. Therefore, the executive is exercising authority given to them by the people. The judiciary is exercising the power that is given to them by the people. The legislature is representing the wishes of the people and write laws that is in favor or for the people. Now, it is also said that a democracy is the worst form of government apart from all the others. Kenya borrows from the United States Constitution. And in the United States Constitution, recently we've seen, we had a president who it was alleged that he did wrong. He was impeached twice. And even currently, he's facing court cases about his actions as president. He was not convicted when he was impeached. But yes, he was impeached. And so going back to Kenya, my call is for the president to be impeached. It doesn't matter what the result of that impeachment is going to be. The legislators were sitting there saying, oh, let us not even try because the president has the majority in parliament. Let me tell you, you are covered by the law of natural justice. The constitution obligates you to do something. You cannot wait for when the time is right, when you have the numbers to impeach a president. You have to impeach a president when he has done wrong, regardless of how that impeachment is going to go. So President Ruto has done several things that warrant for his impeachment. I am not a lawyer and I am not a historian, but what President Ruto has done is in public domain. From the time President Ruto was appointed, he has ventured into the opposition by allegedly bribing the opposition in order for him to win a supermajority. Now, that may not be an unimpeachable offense. Why? Because it is political. President Ruto has every right to talk to every Kenyan and persuade them to join his side of political divide. However, President Ruto has also done several things that are impeachable. The first one that comes to my mind is the fact that the president has recently said that he is not going to obey court orders. Why? Because the courts have been putting injunctions at his pet projects, his manifesto agenda. He wants to roll out his housing plan. He wants to roll out his health care and According to him, the court is issuing judgments that are impeding him. But the president is forgetting that the judiciary is also an equal arm of government. The other arm of government is the legislature. And by the way, the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive are all enshrined in the constitution as what constitutes the Kenyan government. The opposition is required to be a check to the sitting government. 
the sitting executive. The opposition may not be a majority. The opposition may just be a few people, but the opposition is obligated to bring or speak issues that are wrong, that per the constitution. They need to speak, even if it is just their opinion, they have to speak. That is what makes the government become transparent, play above board, and do things that are for the benefit of the people. The president, having said that he is not going to obey the court orders, that is an impeachable offense and a truly moral and a legislature, member of parliament or senate who has integrity should bring a motion to impeach the president. I know the constitution says that there are thresholds for initiating it. I believe it is one third the members of the National Assembly can bring a motion to impeach the president. That number is present. Raila Odinga is currently the leader of the opposition. What is he doing about this? He is going, visiting many sides of the country, doing registration for his party. That is well and good, but that is not what is currently essential. The president needs to be impeached and the opposition's role is to be the forefront in sponsoring a motion to impeach the president. They don't have to win. The Democrats did not win in impeaching Trump, but they did it as a matter of principle. So instead of electioneering, instead of beginning to run for 2027, you cannot neglect Mr. Ruto doing wrong and with the guise of you saying that I am registering people so that I can have the majority in 2027. We need you now. We need you now. Now, what are the other reasons why Ruto should be impeached? Ruto has also interfered with the economy. Ruto, in his executive role, has committed the country into shoddy deals. One of those shoddy deals is the G2G agreement. The G2G agreement was between the government of Kenya, and I don't know with which government, whether it was the government of Qatar or whether it was the government of Saudi Arabia. That is unclear to me. But Ruto is on public domain stating that the G2G deal was above board. Ruto stated that the G2G was going to help the economy. The G2G was going to make the dollar devalue against the Kenya shillings. He said it was a good deal. He even said that the countries, the neighboring countries, should emulate the Kenyan deal, which was good. But what has suddenly happened, the G2G deal was a hoax. Kenya committed to pay an unknown country or unknown individuals millions, if not billions and billions of dollars that could have been used for healthcare, for roads, for giving people employment. It was just mismanagement of the highest caliber. Now, Ruto has also embarked on a policy of collecting taxes from the working class with the guise that he is going to give employment and work to the unemployed. Well and good, this has been stopped by the court. Another reason why Ruto should be impeached is that by virtue of his position, he is required to provide names or nominate names for people to be appointed in the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. This is the commission that is responsible for the election of president and all other elective positions. Yes, the opposition challenged the president to be democratic, to engage the opposition in picking a referee, so to speak. And a dialogue was initiated about what is the status of the dialogue. This is a delaying tactic. Ruto, by virtue of his office, is ensuring that there is no chairman of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, so that if an election is required, and an election can be required any moment, even the president is not immune from death. And if the president died today, or the vice president died today, there is no independent electoral and boundaries commission that can conduct a fair, 
credible and transparent election. Why? Because President Ruto is ensuring that without the chairman, nobody will want to impeach him so that if he is impeached, an election can be conducted. For this reason, the judiciary, the legislature, must act to ensure that Ruto is held to his responsibility for appointing candidates that can be evaluated for that position. Though that is another reason why Ruto should be impeached. Now, my third reason for the impeachment of President Ruto is in the lies that he is telling. It is one thing to campaign to be elected, but after you are elected, you are required to speak with caution. You are required not to just utter anything and promise everything and have roadside declarations that don't matter. There is a budget. There are things that the Constitution allows you to do. There are things that the legislature allows you to do through the law. When a budget is passed, you are required to follow the budget. You are required to distribute resources according to the budget. But what has Ruto done? Ruto has gone on out and began dishing money left, right, and center and declaring projects, including things that are not in the budget. For that reason, what has happened to the economy? The dollar has continued to go up. It will go up and it will continue to go up as long as Ruto tells lies. The global economy is not stupid. The global economy knows who is a stable leader, which is a stable government. And when the president of a nation cannot stop telling lies, the value of their money is not going to be worth anything. We saw in Zimbabwe where the value of their money was not worth the toilet paper. Kenya needs to take heed. Things are going to get major if Ruto is not impeached. It doesn't matter what the outcome. It doesn't matter. But sometimes impeachment can be used to actually chide the president, to let him know that people are serious. You've got to be serious in your work. You've got to be able to tell people the truth. You've got to do right. You've got to have integrity. And therefore, I want to call on the, the legislators, those who we have elected to represent us, those who are in the opposition, and those who are in government. It is your responsibility to bring in, to table a motion of no confidence in the president and even the vice president, because the two are tied to the hip. The vice president was ready to call for the removal of a judge on grounds that the judge was corrupt and he had no evidence. Just because the judge made a ruling that he does not like. Just because the judge made this ruling when he was a civilian, when he was not vice president, now he is trying to get back at the judge. He picks a cue from the president who says that there is corruption in the judiciary. So ladies and gentlemen, I implore you, people of good character, a lot of evil goes wrong if a few good men and women do nothing, it is your obligation. It is the law of natural justice that requires you to initiate a motion of no confidence in the president and initiate an impeachment motion. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. And I hope my message will be shared by those who love Kenya and do not want to see it go to the dogs. The dollar is continuing to gain. Kenya's shilling is continuing to depreciate, even among her neighbors. Is this what we want? No. We want a stable country. We want a stable economy for us and for our children. Cheers.